Greetings, everyone. This is Martin Zender in my studio here. And to begin this week of shows, I would like to acknowledge those two people that are getting these shows to you. Uh, Travis Penner of Vancouver, British Columbia, and my sister Kelly Stokey in Canton, Ohio. Travis is putting the titles on. He's uploading these uh, shows to YouTube, and he's doing... Um, other little fancy things behind the scenes. And my sister Kelly, of course, is getting this stuff on the website. And she's the one who picks out the photos for the show. I used to do that, uh, but I trained her to have an odd eye for the odd photo. And she's doing a fantastic job. So Travis Penner, Kelly Stokey, thank you very much. And um, if you all could maybe drop them a line and say hello, that'd be nice. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to give Travis's address out, though. He hasn't told me to do that. So just tell me. I'll tell him. John is a minister of the circumcision. John is the one writing the letter of the unveiling. And it's important at this time, as he's writing these letters to these seven ecclesias, it's important to remember that John is of the circumcision. He's writing to assembled synagogues, people assembled in synagogues. What's a synagogue? It's a Jewish assembly. Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. You have to keep this letter in that circle or it will screw you up completely. Uh, Jesus himself said in Matthew 15, 24, I was not commissioned except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Paul verifies this in Romans 15, 8, saying that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision to confirm the patriarchal promises. Now, Jesus dispatched his 12 disciples uh, other times he had uh, 70 disciples and he dispatched them, said, go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Do not go to any city of the nations, including the Samaritans. So his disciples obeyed him and you don't find them going to the nations uh, in the book of Acts or in any of their letters, any of Peter's letters, James letters, uh, Jude's letters. It doesn't happen. So that means that none of the things you're reading as we go through these individual letters to the seven synagogues, the seven ecclesias, none of the advice that Jesus is giving to the ecclesias through John is for you. Because if you take this advice to yourself, you're going to do some really weird Jewish things. All right. Are you in a synagogue? Well, maybe you are if you are get out of the synagogue. You shouldn't be in a synagogue. You shouldn't even be in a Christian church. You should be worshiping God in spirit and in truth through the letters of Paul. Listening to listening to accredited teachers, accredited by God, not man. So it's going to be vast confusion to apply anything written in these letters to yourself. Now, I like Martin Luther because this guy, he so saw the difference between the gospel to the circumcision to Israel, and that to the uncircumcision, that he thought there was no room for James. And he voted to kick James out of the Bible. Luther was a radical man. He probably came up with this brilliant idea while he was sitting on his toilet. He was famous for constipation. That's where he um, received the great doctrine of justification. Holy cow, my sin like everybody else. Okay, congratulations, Martin Luther. They unearthed, remember? Last year I showed you a photo. They actually excavated. They found Martin Luther's toilet in Wittenberg. Great discovery, man. Uh, boy, I'd like to be a shrine for, for me. This is where it happened. This is where it hit Luther. It probably hit Luther then to toss James out the window. But this is, this is interesting because um, when you see the vast chasm between the circumcision and the uncircumcision, you're tempted to throw the circumcision out. What's all this law doing? You can't mix law and grace exactly precisely. You don't throw it out. You just learn to compartmentalize it, right? Men are better at this than women. Sorry, but I mean, women like to make everybody happy. You know, a little bit of James, a little bit of Paul. Men like, no, James here, Paul there. Luther in his toilet. James here, Paul there. No, that's the way it's going to work. And that's the way it's going to work here. Um, I love this. Listen to this quote on page 94 of the unveiling of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm reading here from A. Enoch. Great quote. No one who has basked 
in the beams of such beneficence. That is what we find in the book of the Ephesian epistle. He's referencing that here. Uh, the Ephesian, in the letter Paul writes to Ephesus, we're saved through faith for grace. Saved through faith for grace. Um, this kind of teaching, faith and grace, it does not enter into the advice that Jesus Christ is giving to these ecclesias. Fantastic. It doesn't even, there's no grace, peace, faith, just uh, don't worry about anything. You're not going to find that in any of these letters to these seven synagogues in Asia Minor. You're just not going to find it. No one who has basked in the beams of such beneficence. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, sure I am. Why do I doubt myself? Can enter the cloudy atmosphere of these letters without experiencing a chill. No one who has basked in the beams, in the sun, in the warmth, in the happiness of Paul's letters can enter into the letters to these seven synagogues, which A. E. Nock rightly calls a cloudy atmosphere. It is cloudy compared to the sunshine of his love, the sunshine of your love. Look up cream and play sunshine of, of my love, sunshine of your love, and apply it to our gospel. And comparatively, the circumcision epistle is a cloudy atmosphere. Any of the circumcision epistles, but especially the letters to these seven synagogues, cloudy atmosphere. You'll experience a chill. You'll get a chill if you try to apply these things to yourself. Um, so the, really, speaking of James, the nearest thing to these uh, really hardcore, hard-ass letters to the seven ecclesias is the book of James. Because James talks about, he insists on acts and endurance. He insists on staying true. He uses, he addresses his letter in chapter 4 to adulterers and adulteresses. Um, and there are threats. James loves the threats, boy. He is threatening people left, right, top, and bottom. Uh, for failure to live up to the requirements, and there are requirements in the circumcision evangel. And there are also requirements in these letters, these seven letters to the seven synagogues delivered to them by seven messengers, pictured by stars. So to apply any, oh, by the way, I got to tell you, I, there was this nurse I once worked with. I worked at a hospital in Canton, Ohio, Altman Hospital, and uh, there was this nurse there named Becky. Oh, I just remembered her last name. Wow. I wrote down that I wanted to tell you about her, and I remembered her last name, but I don't think I should say it. And I was glad. Well, at least I don't remember her last name, so I can't say it. But now I just remembered it. I'm tempted to say it because you know me. I name names, but now it's not necessary. But she loved the book of James, and I will never forget her. She had this fair complexion. But whenever she mentioned the book of James, because I asked her one day, I would carry around my Bible. This was in 1981. I carry my Bible around and read it during breaks. And she says, oh, what are you reading? I said, oh, I'm reading Romans. Oh, you like Romans? Yeah, I like Romans. Um, I asked her, oh, what's your favorite book of the Bible? And then it was as if a symphonic orchestra struck up a chord behind her or a harp. I love the book of James. And she got a rosy, I swear to God, that her cheeks flushed. And she got a rosy glow on her cheeks when she mentioned James. And even then, I was understanding the distinctions between the Gospels. And I said, why? I was very direct in those days, as if I'm not today. Why would you like the book of James? It's full of, well, as it's full of um, warnings. It's subversive to the grace we have in Paul. It's destructive to the doctrine of faith. And it's a crime against grace. Other than that, I see no problem with it. Well, she loved it because it did contain commands. She loved it because there were warnings. And religious people and people who tend to the Judaism message or to the circumcision letters, they love prohibitions they love law and they love these warnings and so i think revelation may have been her second favorite book do you think this is my favorite book <laughs> what really oh i'm being told that several people out there think that 
Revelation, the book of the unveiling, is my favorite book. It's not. Then why am I talking about it? Because there are important things here uh, to help teach us about the nature of God and also to constantly distinguish between the gospel of the circumcision and the uncircumcision. And besides that, we're living in the end times. Um, so th this girl loved James, and I could just tell there was a religious spirit that was disguised with this aura of peace and calm. But it was not. It was self-righteousness. Oh, boy, you could spot it a mile away, self-righteousness. And that rosy glow came on, and like, I'm doing what James says. Are you doing what James says? I said, no, I'm doing what Paul says. And I'm embracing faith, not works. Okay, and then we got into that classic argument, is it works or faith? Is it faith or works? James requires works to validate faith. Paul says it's faith and not works, and you cannot reconcile the two. I have seen people attempting to reconcile James and Paul, and they have required medical attention afterwards, some of them needing supplemental oxygen. So don't attempt it. You're on your own. Nobody's asking you to do it. Peter talks about the wrath of God, 1 Peter 4.17. Judgment begins in the house of God. That's what Peter says in 1 Peter 4.17. So not wrath, but judgment. Judgment begins in the house of God. This is what they have to look forward to in the book of Revelation. So how can you confound this with the grace going out to the nations as we have it today? You won't, you can't confound it. You could, but uh, I'm going to keep you from doing that. Trust me, I'm here to help you. And we are going to maintain that wonderful wall between the grace God gave to us, the nations, and the law coming through prohibitions and warnings to Israel.